Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Glad to have all of you here in this wild, wild world in which we live. Glad to see you this morning. Hope everyone's doing well. Hope your families are doing well. And uh, we continue to monitor the situation locally and how that needs to affect us, if at all. And so, uh, have any questions about that? Give me a call. We'll do the best we can. And we're really grateful that you come to be with us this morning. Glad to have some visitors as well. Thank you, folks, for coming to be with us. George Darnell, an old friend of mine from up in the bluegrass, is <coughs> with us occasionally. And George, good to see you this morning. Uh, as far as announcements, just a couple of things. Number one, our secretary, uh, Cindy Redmond, as you know by now, we mentioned this last Sunday, her son, uh, Deontay, freshman Carson Newman, uh, involved in a, a car accident here a week, 10 days ago, has had two surgeries so far, and uh, things are improving. Uh, he will be next week at some point, they feel pretty sure, transferred over to Patricia Neal Center for some uh, rehab, maybe a couple of weeks or so. Uh, some other injuries he had outside the surgery seem to be improving, and so she's very encouraged by that. So first of all, keep them in your prayers. And secondly, uh, we just thought that as a church, you know, she has extra expenses, motel rooms, those kind of things as well. And uh, we alluded to this last Sunday, but we have established a fund here. So if you'd like to give something to Cindy and Deontay to kind of help them through this particular time, then you can do so just by getting a check to us in any way you want to do that. The offer plays fine. And, uh, just put on there, Redmond will be all right, or Cindy. Uh, Deontay, I had to ask a long time how to spell that before I finally got that down. Uh, but we want to try to help them out a little bit. Several of you have come to me or to the church office uh, asking how we can help. And so please help uh, any way that you can there. Uh, the other thing I want to mention today, these days it's hard to know what to do about offerings and those kind of things, and I don't mean our regular tithes and offerings, we're receiving those, but normally in June we would have had what we call our local missions offering, and we put that off, and uh, Linda K. Flack, our missions committee chairman, has contacted me a couple times in the last few days and wondered about doing an offering in July, and. Uh, so we're going to do that, and uh, we know our own offerings are coming up a little short these days, we remind you about that, but this offering is divided between various uh, ministries here in our county, food ministry, clinic, etc. So next Sunday there will be envelopes uh, in the pews for our local missions offering. We'll receive it throughout the month of July, and wanted you to be uh, aware of that as that time uh, approaches. Right now, folks, we're not doing a Sunday school program. We're thinking about when we could do that or how we could. We also, uh, in spite of the situation, want to reschedule something that we had to cancel back when this whole virus business began, a, a dedication of our new building. And so, uh, we're going to be working on a date to do that, and once again, how we might do it, and we'll be keeping you informed about that. And finally, I'll remind you one more time, uh, fbcgatlinburg.org is our active page for members, and I'm posting pastors' updates a couple times a week there with latest information, and you can uh, connect to our service uh, recordings and et cetera there and prayer list and other things so so keep that handy and it will help to uh, keep up now uh, a few prayer concerns this morning and we remember our military personnel as always we remember our world in the coronavirus pandemic especially victims and 
first responders. We remember our world and our country, especially in the midst of racial unrest. We continue to remember the family of Ruth Shirley, the family of Harlan Reagan, and the family of Catherine Martin, all who passed away recently here in our church. Deontay remains at uh, UT right now, and we'll keep you updated on that. Jim Fay recovering from a very difficult <coughs> surgery. Uh, Charlene Cox, we're praying for, been diagnosed with cancer. Her husband, Bill, has health issues also. Uh, Sonia Martin is uh, Sonia Marion, excuse me. I left my glasses at home, so I picked these up in the office. I think 10 years ago, they were just the strength I needed. Today, it's a little different. Uh, Sonia Marion, and that's Barbara Bradshaw's uh, daughter, where his sister is having cancer treatments right now. I'm going to add one more this morning. Uh, my lovely bride is in the hospital today. She's down at Lecoq Medical Center, and uh, the last 10 days have been a whirlwind. Uh, we've been to three medical centers, one doctor. <coughs> Uh, she has more symptoms than we have time to list right now, including uh, we know she has shingles, she has an abscess tooth, she has uh, breathing, swallowing issues, uh, upset stomach, uh, diabetes, sugar levels all over the place, and uh, just when we think we've had it nailed down, we've had to do another something. And, had a terrible breathing spell yesterday morning, so we took her to the local emergency room and they, they admitted her there. They're doing some tests also this morning. So we honestly can't quite figure out what's uh, going on with her. And so if I seem a little bit distracted, she's taken care of me for almost 50 years in the center, so uh, I'm kind of fond of her. So if you can give her a place in your prayers today, I would appreciate it. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, on this Sunday morning, in spite of the complications of the world in which we live, we're grateful to be able to come into this place to worship. We realize that in a world like ours, we desperately need your presence and, and your help. And we claim your promise that you would never leave us nor forsake us. We feel sure, Father, that your presence is essential to bring us through these times we're dealing with these days. And uh, in some situations, the answers, the right thing to do, they're hard to find. And so give us, and, and our leaders especially, Father, direction and guidance. And we pray for these today we've mentioned who've lost loved ones in recent days. Others are dealing with illness and uh, thank you that you are our ever-present help in time of trouble. And now, Father, we are here above all else to worship you in spirit and truth. We acknowledge you as the true and living God, the creator of all things, a God of majesty and power, but also a God of love. We look back and see the gift of your Son in our behalf, and we realize how deeply you love us, Father, to send him to live and die and rise again to be our living Savior and Lord, and today we confess our sins through him, and we thankfully ask for the forgiveness that he makes possible. And again now, Father, accept our worship and praise and adoration this morning, may you be glorified through us. In Christ's name we ask it. Amen.
that we loved him, but that he loved us. He loved us enough to send his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we are also to love one another.
Our first gospel reading is from Matthew 25, 34 through 36. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Let's stand and continue in worship of the one from whom all blessings flow.
I'm reading from Matthew chapter 10, verses 40 through 42. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of the disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. It was many, many years ago now that we met for one of our uh, cooperative Baptist fellowship gatherings, national <coughs> gathering. And uh, as you may know, it's the same way as other Baptist Convention meetings. Uh, they usually have a day when state organizations get together. And so we met that day in our Kentucky Fellowship luncheon gathering. George, you could have been in this meeting, I'm not sure. But uh, the program was a couple of individuals who had been lifetime missionaries but only recently had uh, switched over, I'll call it, to the CDF. Their names were Lonnie and Fran Turner. They had spent 20-some years in Belgium. They had served in the sub-Saharan region. By the way, we've had a little of the Sahara drift through this week. It's so the dust you may have seen. So, uh, But currently at that time, they, they were working in Washington, D.C., now, their ministry was among uh, diplomats and, and, and all kinds of different things. They, they provided ministry. They hosted meals and dinners for them and helped them in time of crisis and other individuals. A lot broader than I'm saying. But I remember particularly what they said was the one sentence definition of their work. They said, ours is a ministry of hospitality. A ministry of hospitality. That uh, title, technically today, could work for our sermon. Because we have before us a call to hospitality. It's important, that word, in the Christian faith. Some of you know the name of Andre Newman. In one of his books, Reaching Out, he spoke about this word. And he said, if there's any concept worth restoring to its original depth and evocative meaning, it is the concept of hospitality. It is one of the richest biblical terms that can deepen and broaden our insight into our relationships with our fellow human beings. Hospitality means friendship for the guest. It means the creation of a free space where the stranger can enter and become a friend instead of an enemy. Hospitality. It is the theme of our gospel reading from Matthew today, which is the lectionary gospel for this Sunday of the year. In particular, Matthew 10, beginning in verse 40, Jesus says, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. We are to welcome, and Jesus uses the word several times in that brief paragraph, we are to welcome others. There's another aspect of hospitality, which Jesus continues in Verse 42, whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, 
Truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Here Jesus references hospitality in the context of two specific acts, welcoming others and giving a drink of cold water. It would not be hard to find individuals who would argue with the significance of this idea. Uh, one example is, if we go back quite a while, the 19th century preacher, which all of us have heard of, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, once was quoted as having said, we must stick to the great themes of the faith in our preaching. In other words, redemption, sin, forgiveness, love, there's where we need to focus, he suggested. However, apparently, our Lord Jesus believed these issues were worth spending time with because he did so regularly in his teaching. Most of us remember at least part of Matthew 25, sometimes called the last judgment. Verse 34 begins, Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. There they are again, a warm welcome and a cold drink. Welcoming is vital, isn't it? Nineteen sixty two to nineteen seventy one, a rather odd sitcom aired and was highly successful. I key you in on what it was with these words. Well, now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kids. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heap and help of our hospitality. We're all looking for some hospitality, aren't we? And I very much believe, and maybe more so in these days than previously, folks, we live in a world where people seeking some hospitality, a warm welcome, a cold drink, some sign that they're cared for and that they matter. Jesus not only told us to be hospitable, but he, he modeled it in his life. The examples are many. I've selected Luke 9, verse 10. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they'd done, and he took them with him and withdrew privately to a city called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them, spoke to them about the kingdom of God, healed those. Don't sell hospitality short. We live in a nation to some degree of strangers. The society in which we're more concerned with building walls that separate. I know it's a tough world out there. It's risky. Welcoming strangers, those you don't know, 
puts you at rest, doesn't it? But yet that's the commandment, folks, to reach out and welcome people. December 2001, and all of you know what happened on September 11th, three months before, I stood on the top of the Empire State Building, and in one direction in which I was looking, two things caught my eye. Number one, down below was a huge, ugly gash, a black hole. And you know what it was. It was where the World Trade Center had stood. But if you lifted your eyes up to the horizon in the distance, you saw another significant item, the Statue of Liberty. And I remember standing there thinking about those two things, the contrast and a black hole, a symbol of hate, a statue that's a symbol of freedom. And indeed, one may get us thinking to prevent one, we have to protect the other. And we do. Freedom is significant. We know there are threats. Yet we're called to be welcoming. Besides that, that statue out there in the harbor bears an inscription. Some of you have been inside and seen it. It reads, in part, give me your tired, your poor. Your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Wow. What a wonderful description of individuals and even a nation being welcoming. Now, maybe you're thinking, Larry, are you suggesting that we consider the teachings of Jesus and let it inform national policy? And I say absolutely. Surely you would not dare suggest to me or anyone that when making national policy, we ought to throw the teachings of Jesus aside and pay them no mind. I hope you know that's wrong. And so this thing of welcoming, it's individual and it's larger and it's hard. And I know it's complicated. We are called upon to be a welcoming people. And by the way, aren't those words interesting in that quote from the Statue of Liberty? Does the same bring us your highly educated? Bring us the best of the best, doesn't it say that? Bring those who are already well established, doesn't say that. Says instead the wretched refuse, the homeless, the tempest tossed. Boy, that's the group Jesus spent a lot of time with, wasn't it? Those kinds of people. Listen to Luke 15, verse 1. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. And if 
Jesus didn't have the opportunity, he would say, yes, I do. I'm proud of it, and so should you. Now, what about this cup of cold water business? Well, here's a couple of current illustrations. I wish I could show you these pictures. May 31st, 2020. Now I'm going to start with the other one. June 2nd, 2020, 1.53 p.m. Someone forwarded to Channel 9 News in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, a short video. The video was of a line, two lines of about... Uh, a dozen police officers, Pittsburgh police. And in front of them is this kind of scraggly looking character, I'm guessing 20 to 25 years old. He has walked up with a case of water and he set it down and he opened it up and he began to distribute the water to the police officers. Now, just a few minutes before, he had been in a group of protesters. He was there to protest. But as he walked up to them, and there had been no direct conflict this day, he said, I've been involved in the protests. I know you're just doing your job. I'm not mad. I just want to give you some cold water. Apparently, as a group, the officer said, thank you. May 31st, 2020. Palm Beach County, Florida. A peaceful protest was taking place in Palm Beach County. It was a Sunday. During those demonstrations, a CBS Channel 12 news viewer took another video. This video was of a Palm Beach County Sheriff's officer, a deputy, giving bottled water to protesters. Now I believe that Palm Beach County police officer and that Scraggy protester had something going. The power of a drink of water. And you realize, folks, that these things welcoming and giving a cold drink, they're 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 bigger than just those things. But Jesus' teaching is about an attitude and approach to life, how we Christians are to live. By reaching out, being welcoming, overcoming barriers, feeding and giving drink to people we may not agree with. powerful stuff. And folks, I want you to notice one final thing. It's not very hard. It's not very hard. You know, it's easy for we Christians to sit back and think, well, you know, if I can give a billion dollars to coronavirus research, I would. Or if I had a medical degree, then I would make myself available to help other people for free. And if this and if that.
And most of us can give a cup of cold water to somebody. It's really the love of God seen in Jesus, channeled, funneled through us, his people. To the world that surrounds us. It begins in Jesus with his teaching, which we've looked at, with his example, which we've looked at, and with his guiding presence in our lives. Someone here today may need that guiding presence. You may have never had that moment when you say, Jesus, I believe in you and what you've done for me in the world. And I accept you into my heart and life. I commit myself to you as a Christian. I want to follow you. Maybe there's someone here who you sit and thinking and Gosh, I'm not sure who of us wouldn't have one thought or two or three. Boy, I really missed some opportunities to just be plain old welcoming. <laughs> Give somebody a cup of cold water. Maybe somebody outside my usual circle. And a good prayer of rededication would be, God, help me to see. Out love. Maybe someone wants to join a church. We're not doing our very usual altar call, but if you're thinking right now about a decision or you've made a decision, I really hope that you'll call me. Today, tomorrow, contact our church office, any of our staff ministers, our deacons. We'd love to talk with you. Hear about the decision you're making and help you move forward with it. I hope you'll do that. Let's have a moment of prayer. Father, life's scary out there. We live in the kind of world where sometimes giving a drink of water and a warm welcome put us at risk. But we saw, we see in the Bible that Jesus taught it. He did it. And we're called to do the same. So help us to be good representatives of Jesus our Lord in a complicated world. May we practice hospitality Folks, again, I'm grateful for you being here today. Uh, again, we're not meeting on Wednesday nights. We'll be keeping information flowing to you. Let's stand together, please, and I'm going to share our benediction, which comes from Romans chapter 15, verse 7, where Paul writes, Welcome one another, therefore, just as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. Good morning.